minutes. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so pest biology, this is just a little bit of a breakdown of insects and their different classes. Um, different classifications, different mouth parts, different ways of feeding, all that good stuff. So, estimated to be 100,000 different insect species in North America. That's a lot of different types of bugs. Um, they thrive in more environments than any other group of animals. Typically, in your backyard, you might have a thousand different types of insect species. So. That could be a good or a bad thing. Um, but fewer than 3% of all insects are actually classified as pests. So only really 3% of that 100,000 are a problem. So the different values of insects, they can aid in pollination, the spread of pollen, and the fertilization of flowers. They can consume weeds just like they could chew up a plant that you don't want them to chew up. There's a lot of insects who actually feed on different types of weeds. Soil improvement, uh, you have a lot of insects that make little tunnels or burrow through the ground that loosens up the soil and provides air and water movement to be a little bit easier. They're scavengers. Uh, you have a little dead animal or something you might see a little maggot in there eating on its carcass. That's kind of gross, but it's, you know, the truth. And that can help a lot in your backyard. Yeah. And harmful insect control, so good bug versus bad bug. And then food supply. A lot of our birds and smaller animals feed on different types of insects. So we'll talk about body structures. Insects have an exoskeleton and three different parts that make up their body structure. That's the head, which is made up of the eyes, the antenna, and the, its mouth parts. You have the thorax, which is where the wings and legs are attached. And then you have its abdomen, which contains the reproductive organs, spiracles, and prolegs. So head, thorax, and abdomen, three different uh, three different compartments, basically. So insect development, you have two different types of metamorphosis. We have gradual metamorphosis, which means it slowly grows from an egg into a nymph into an adult stage. Basically, this is what human beings go through. You start out in basically a smaller form of your adult self. You don't actually change what you are. You don't start out as a worm and then end up as a butterfly, you gradually grow and uh, metamorphosize into an adult. So you were an example of gradual metamorphosis. Complete metamorphosis, you have a couple extra stages in there, starting out with an egg, then you develop into a larva, a pupa, an adult. So there's different forms. It happens over a longer period of time and there's different body structures and different forms for each one of these stages. So insect classification, um, arthropoda, phylum, jointed legs, uh, insecta is its class. It must have three pairs of legs and three body segments to be a true insect. And then the order is just its family genus and species. Just like in a flower, insects have families of genus and species. So we'll go through each of the insect orders a little bit. Um, Coleoptera, most of your beetles and weevils are going to be in this stage. They have a hard shell. They have two separate segmented wings. Everybody know what this is a picture of? Beetle. Japanese beetle, yeah. Very familiar. So most of your beetles are going to be in this category. Um, 
Dermoptera. This is where your earwigs come in. They're kind of gross looking little boogers, but um, these are all different types of earwigs. Some of those are damaging, some of them are not. You see this, uh, they like to eat and feed on decaying wood. So a lot of times if you peel the bark back on a fallen log, you'll see a little earwig in there. Um, diptera, this is your flies and gnats, which in a baby form are little maggots, which is kind of gross. But um, this would be your adult fly, your larva is the little maggot, and your pupa stage. Hemiptera. This is a picture of an azalea lace bug. And I just put up here, because uh, this is pretty common, but I just put up here, this is what damage on your azalea bush will look like if you have a problem with azalea lace bugs. Um, this is a lot of flying insects with segmented wings. But that's the main, most common one that you'll see around here. Is that a native insect? Azalea lace bug. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's Asian. I'm trying to think of the genus of it, but I can't. But uh, it more likely feeds on um, not necessarily our native azaleas, but on our hybrids that we have. Um, Hemoptera, this has a really hard body and this long wing. You may know what this is. Cicada, yeah. Those are kind of gross. Huh? A McDonald's bunch? Oh! Oh, yeah, look at that. I don't know what this is. This picture is really blurry on my computer, too. Hymenoptera. Anybody know what this is? Jim must know. He must. Yeah, this is a nasty little sawfly, and in its state right here, in its little larva state, is the most damaging, more so than the flies. You'll see these on a lot of things. Uh, a, yeah, sawfly, saw, S-A-W, sawfly, yeah. Lots of uh, yeah. There's lots of different things. These don't act, these don't form. These sawflies just form. They're on the back of the leaf. You can just flip the leaf over, and they're stuck on it. They don't actually have a web that they stay in, and they are super damaging. And there's a picture of the adult, but again, the the larva stage of that it's going to be what is really gross. Lepidoptera. This is where we get our butterflies and moths. Neuroptera, um, this is not an azalea lace bug, but you may know what this is. Yeah, lace wings or thrips are also in this category. Orthoptera, yeah, grasshoppers. Isonoptera. And I'm not actually sure what that little guy is. <laughs> Truth be told. I'll tell you what it is. Oh, that's a thrip. That's a thrip that has a complete and gradual metamorphosis. So, oops. So, some common non-insect pests um, that are arthropods. These are things that I think we often consider it a bug, but it's not really because it doesn't have those three body segments and those three pairs of legs. Spider mites, spiders, ticks, millipedes, centipedes, and pill bugs. Um, all those are not true insects because they don't have those characteristics. 
I mean, this just looks like a blob. But who's had a problem with spider mites before? Well, y'all are really lucky. I bet you have them and you just don't know it. Um, these non-insect pests, but these are a real big problem. Um, they get on all sorts of different plants, indoors and outdoors. Um, spiders, this is a disgusting picture. Um, yeah, that's pretty gross. Um, the agent before me hated spiders. Uh, I too hate spiders, so that is the one thing that I've found at least that we have in common. Um, anything else in the world I can handle, but a spider, I don't want anything to do to it. Yeah, yeah, brown recluse. Did you? My daddy did too, and I think that's why he's scared to death of them. And when, when my daddy's scared of something, I'm like, it's bad, I don't need to. I don't need to mess with it. Um, ticks, of course, these are gross little boogers. We're all familiar with these. Uh, millipedes, centipedes. And then that's a little pill bug. You see those on the ground underneath some leaves. So uh, identifying insects, there's several different things that can help it, uh, make it a little bit easier for you. Matching the pest to the host plant. Not all insects feed or are pests to all plants. So being able to identify correctly what plant you have and then figuring out what its common pests are helps you narrow it down to what actual pests you have on there. Um, again, ID keys, we'll kind of go over some things and I think in the next few slides. And then pest calendars, know the pest life cycle, know what stage it's in and what the damage looks like in each stage. And that will help you figure out, again, what you have going on. So knowing when Japanese beetles emerge, you can look at an indicator plant such as your roses and stay on the lookout for them. So, there's different types of injury that uh, insect pests can um, give to your plants. A lot of that is dependent on its mouth parts, which we'll talk a little bit about. Um, so you can have chewing damage, piercing or sucking damage, meaning it has some sort of mouth part that uh, pierces the leaf and sucks out nutrients from that leaf and can cause damage that way internal, below ground eggs, nesting, disease transmission, and honeydew. So chewing insects, a lot of caterpillars are examples of this, does just what it says. They have a little teeth mouth parts that actually gnaw holes in your leaf or chew the edges off. Um, this is a birch sawfly caterpillar much like the other sawfly caterpillars, it munches your leaves down. Uh, piercing and sucking insects, anybody know what is in this picture? Adelgid. Anybody familiar with hemlock woolly adelgid? Yes. Okay, good. If not, you will be, yeah. Which, the questions are not as common as they used to be, I don't think. Um, there's a lot of companies out there now who know how to take care of these, so it's not as common as it used to be, but piercing, sucking, uh, basically they attach themselves to a leaves, poke their mouth parts in it, and suck out nutrients, which causes damage to the leaves. Um, internal feeders, this is a picture of a longhorn beetle. Your wood boring insects, um, that would be an example of an internal feeder something like a leaf miner, it gets inside of the leaf and makes its little home. Um, or again, a wood boring insect, uh, ambrosia beetle gnaws its way in the trunk of your crepe myrtles. Um, it feeds from the inside. Below ground feeders, um, this is a Japanese beetle grub. I don't know why these pictures are so teeny tiny small. Um, but uh, egg layers, a lot of cases, um, different wasps and flies can be examples of egg layers where they form 
a little cocoon on the outside of the plant and lay their eggs. And the adult stage is not necessarily what the adult stage is not necessarily what damages the plant, but the eggs when they hatch are. So here, a nesting insect. We talked about those caterpillars. This is the eastern tent caterpillar. Um, of course, they make that nest surrounding the tree trunk, and that's where they live and are protected. And then um, thrips and earwigs, they transmit a lot of plant diseases, so not necessarily the feeding that they're doing on your plant, but um, the transmission of diseases. They can feed on one plant that might have some kind of problem going on and then uh, move that over to a healthy plant. And then honeydew producers, um, who knows what produces honeydew? What pest produces honeydew on plants? Aphids. Aphids, yes. Aphids produce honeydew. Honeydew is just a sticky substance that the bug excretes as it's feeding on your plant. Um, so it leaves this little coating on there. Honeydew also usually leads to some other form of problem like sooty mold. So um, scale and aphids both, depending on what kind of scale it is, um, but aphids can produce honeydew on a holly and it leaves that stickiness on the leaves and then later on you're probably going to get a problem with sooty mold which is just little spores can kind of stick to that honeydew and coat the leaf surface. So honeydew producers can lead to secondary problems as far as diseases go as well. But aphids are the most common honeydew producer. And this is a picture of some scale insects. They also are honeydew producers. If you pick, if you have ever seen a scale insect on a plant, not all of them look like this. Some of them, uh, popcorn scale is really common. That one also gets on hollies. It looks like a little white puffy bump on the stem of your hollies. Peel it off and feel it. It feels really sticky. Um, it's because it's got that honeydew on the bottom of it. So different management controls. You have cultural, mechanical, biological, and chemical. Um, beneficial insects would be an example of, yes, ladybugs. That's a good one, but which of these? Yes, it's a living organism taking care of another. So ladybugs are really good for aphids. They like to eat them. Um, your praying mantis, I don't know, talk to bug experts, uh, and I think they're on the fence about that. They can eat good bugs, but they also, or bad bugs, but they also eat good bugs. They actually feed on lady bees, um, I mean lady beetles, so you mix reviews about whether praying mantis is good. An ambush bug, we see that a lot. They actually attack stink bugs. Um, did anybody read the article that came out about the kissing bug? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, don't listen to that. Um, the ambush bug and the assassin bug are types of stink bugs. They actually feed on bad stink bugs. So if you see one of those, which you probably won't because they're not very common. There's a lot of other bugs that look just like them. Um, they're actually good bugs, so let them go. They look nasty. <laughs> but there's two different types of stink bugs. Um, the brown marmorated is a pest. Yeah, uh, just like ladybugs, it can overwinter in your house and hatch out, and you can have a terrible problem. But also in vegetable crops. They feed on the leaves and uh, bean plants. They really like to feed on bean plants and they can really damage your crop. Um, they have a mouth part called a proboscis and this doesn't, I mean, do it, try it, I did it. They say if you tickle their belly, it'll stick up its proboscis. So if it has a proboscis, then it's a bad stink bug because it has a piercing 
mouth part that can damage your plant. And if it doesn't stick up its proboscis, then it's a good one and you can leave it alone. So I don't know who wants to go around and tickle the tummies of their stink bugs, but um, Craig Malney, who's gonna do your fruits talk actually, said that in one of his presentations and I thought it was hilarious and I was out there with my husband like, tickle its belly. But uh, for the most part, the ones that you're gonna see in your garden are probably gonna be damaging if they're actually on your plant. And you can usually see their damage pretty good. Um, so I'm trying to see if there is anything besides parasitic wasps. Is everybody kind of familiar with what, um, what role a parasitic wasp plays? So um, an easy example that probably a lot of people are familiar with, your tomato hornworms the big giant nasty green things that just chew up your tomato plants. Um, have you ever gone up to your tomato hornworm and seen all these little white things on top of it? Hopefully you have. Um, so what has happened is a parasitic wasp has come up and laid its eggs inside of that worm. And so those little eggs are gonna hatch and kind of eat the worm from the inside out. So. It's a good thing, but a parasitic wasp is, there's a lot of examples of those. There's also a lot of parasitic flies. They basically lay their eggs in another um, insect host, and then when those eggs hatch, it kills the bad insect. Yeah. So these are fun little things. Um, and then the surfed fly, and then that's a picture of a honeybee. So that was, we don't have time to do um, an insect, we have an insect control exercise using the Ag Chem manual, just to kind of talk about those, um, those other forms of insect control. But we're going to talk about insects and in a couple other classes, so we're going to skip that part because we've got like five minutes and um, I don't want to hold y'all over too much. But again, we're going to go over insects um, and the specific pests in detail in several different classes. So we'll go over specifics for vegetable gardening and specifics for ornamentals as well. So that was just kind of a rundown of body parts things like that. So are there any questions about, these are two super heavy subjects and we went through them really quick, but hopefully you have read or will read those chapters in your manual and it'll all kind of come together. But does all of that make sense? No questions? Are you going to post these? Yes. I'll get the um, PowerPoints posted right after class and then the video will take a little while to post, depending on how Miles feels. If it was me posting it, you'd never get it because um, I don't know how to, I don't even have an account on YouTube, so I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I'm not tech savvy at all, which you'll see me struggle through the, um, all right, well, I think next week you have Miles is your speaker, right? Yes, Miles is going to be back again. Did I introduce Miles? Okay, Miles is going to be back next week to talk about lawns. And then we're going to talk about weeds? I guess, yes. Yes, weeds and lawns. Remember your homework this week is to do a uh, couple of example searches in Adobe Reader. And uh, your homework this week, download the homework. Little sign is one page. It says go through and do some example searches in Adobe Reader. Adobe Reader is 99% sure it's already on your computer. 